What's up guys? In this video, what I want to do is tackle this problem using synthetic division. And the reason why I want to do that is because no matter how many times I teach synthetic division with my students, I always have some time either on a quiz or homework or in class to be able to present them with a problem like this. And year after year without fail, students always get stumped. There's a couple of reasons why this problem, it can be confusing for students. And one of the main reasons that this student is really confusing is in my class, we don't deal with this notation a lot, at least when I am introducing and practicing synthetic division. So for a student that has seen a problem like this for the very first time, it can sometimes be a little bit overwhelming. Now we know synthetic division is a pretty step-by-step -step process. So that when we see we have a quadratic and a linear term, we should think this problem is pretty straightforward, but there are a couple twists and turns in this problem that I wanted to go ahead and work with you. So hopefully if you ever see a problem like this on a test, a quiz, an exam, you know exactly what to do. So the first thing I think students need to understand about this problem is it is a division problem. Now they might see the multiplication between their two terms and they recognize, well, how is this a division problem? So the main thing we need to understand here at first is whenever we have a term raised to a negative power, that really means that's actually supposed to be in the denominator. Because remember our exponent rules, if I have X to the negative M, then that can be the same thing as one over X to the positive M. So for you know an example, if I have like five times, let's say X to the negative second power, I can rewrite that as five over in X squared, right? So whenever we have something raised to a negative power, I can rewrite that as the reciprocal or in the denominator here as a positive power. So the real way I wanna be able to write this is a P squared plus three P minus nine divided by a five minus P. Now again, you can write that to the positive power or just leave off the power because it's just a one. Now, the next thing I notice here is that the P is not in front of five. And typically, if you remember a lot of synthetic division problems, we always have like X equals four, X equals seven, right? Those are kind of the straightforward type of process, straightforward types of problems. So a lot of times students will get confused here. And rather than trying to go over here and rewrite it, what I always tell students, when you need to do synthetic division, the best thing you can possibly do is just set whatever your denominator is equal to zero and then solve for your variable. That is gonna be your value K that you're going to use for synthetic division. So you can see in this case that when I do that, all I did was add P on both sides and I get P is equal to five. So P is going to be my value K. That's going to be what's outside of my box for synthetic division. Now remember on what's inside of the box, that's going to be the coefficients of your polynomial. A couple things just to remember that you need to make sure you have, you need to make sure you have descending powers. So whatever your degree is, it should go from two to one and then your constant. And again, if you're missing a term, always use a placeholder as zero. And if you don't have a number in front, then just go ahead and make sure that is going to be one. So at this stage, if you basically know what you're doing for synthetic division, you could say this is not very difficult of a problem, right? First thing we're gonna do is bring down the one and we always multiply on the diagonal, add on the vertical. So one times five is going to be a five. Three plus five is going to be an eight. Eight times five is going to be a 40. Our negative nine plus 40 is going to be a positive 31. And then remember, this is going to be your remainder, constant, linear. And then if you had more terms, you go quadratic, cubic, and cortic, and so on and so on. But this is the wrong answer. And you might say, wait a minute, how do you know that's the wrong answer? And the reason being is there's a coefficient of our P. See, if I was to go ahead and rewrite this problem as a P squared plus three P minus nine divided by negative P plus five, what you would notice is there's a value in front of P, which is negative one. And if you remember, whenever we have a number in front of P that is not positive one, that's gonna change your quotient. And the easiest way to kind of look at that is just to look at that using long division. If I go and write negative P plus five and write P squared plus three P minus nine in long division, what you can see here is when I, when I divide negative P into P squared, I'm gonna get a negative P. Now, again, let's just do this long division because it is such a short problem. Negative P times negative P is going to be a P squared. Negative P times five is going to be a negative five P. Go ahead and subtract the rows here right? And therefore that's going to give me zero P squared. And this is going to give me a positive eight P negative P divides into eight P a negative eight times negative eight times negative eight P is going to be a negative eight P negative eight times five is going to be a negative 40. Again, go ahead and subtract your rows. What you're going to get here is a positive 31. So basically we got the exact same answers, but these are negative and this one is positive. So how do we transform our synthetic division to the correct answer with long division? All we simply need to do is whatever our coefficient is for our term in our divisor, right? If it's negative one, if it's two, if it's five, then all you need to do is divide your quotient from synthetic division by that value. So all I simply need to do in this case is just divide everything by negative one, which is going to give me a negative one and a negative eight. So I'll still have a positive 31. So that's my remainder my constant, and that's my linear term. Therefore, my final answer, which we already know is gonna be, which we already know from our long division, is a negative P minus eight. And again, cause that's really not an X, that's actually supposed to be a P. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. And hopefully if you've seen a problem like this and been confused, then this was helpful in explaining on how to approach it. If you want more examples on how to apply synthetic division, or you'd like to go and take a look at notes and resources that I have for my own courses, then go ahead and check out the playlist and resources I have for you down below. Cheers.